my feet in the stirrups, I'm so happy. There's nothing like the sound of Carolina hoopies. We're here in Williamson, North Carolina at the Bob Martin Agriculture Center. We're going to take you front row right to a reigning futurity. And a reigning futurity is an event that is designed for horses three years old and under. A lot of these horses have never been in a competition pen before, but I assure you it's going to be an event to enjoy. 22 entries, competition is fierce. Some of the biggest names in reigning are right here in Williamston with us tonight. So gather up the family, get comfortable, and let's get ready to slide. This is Beth Richardson from Columbia, Maryland, and she's president of the Virginia Rain and Horse Association. And she's going to tell us a little bit about the association and, and what we're doing this weekend. So this weekend is uh, our, probably our biggest show of the year. We have about 205 horses on the grounds. We have a uh, what we call a futurity, so in reigning horses terms, that is for three-year-old reigning horses. A lot of horses here, this will be their first time to come into the show pen and compete as a three-year-old. They don't show or compete before they're three for okay. NRHA. Uh, we also have a, what we call an ancillary affiliate show that goes alongside that specific aged event and that show um, includes all of the normal NRHA top 10 awards so we have people run for world titles in specific divisions so we, we're offering all of those classes as well. Wow. So the ancillary show, that affiliate section of the show is sponsored by C.W. Wiley Custom Saddles and then our futurity event we're very fortunate to have McGee Farms uh, Performance Horses as our sponsor for the futurity and they're located in King, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're, we're grateful for that because that, that really um, has helped us a lot. We're trying to, we're building this show over, you know, in progressively over the few years to try to try to bring more money in and bring more people in. And if people want to get started in reining, what would you advise them on how to do that? But, and NRHA has an entry level program and the Virginia Reining Horse Association, we add a beginner class. So we have a VRHA beginner class for anyone who's just starting out mm -hmm. with sort of relaxed rules. They can ride with two hands, they can do simple lead changes and that kind of thing, just a little bit easier for them to get started and, they're, and that, that's limited to riders who are at that beginning level. So they're competing against people of equal experience. And the Virginia Reining Horse Association. How many members do you guys have? I think it's about 300. Wow. I know we have four over 400 on our Facebook page. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so um, we webcast all, all of our shows mm -hmm. uh, and we have people that follow us and so this weekend there have been a lot of activity on Facebook and on our webcast watching the horses horses run this weekend. That's really neat. Yeah. And um, where do you show? Where do you have shows at? So we have uh, four shows, primarily four shows a year. We have three of those here at the, at the Ag Center in Williamston, uh, one in March and then that March show is focused on entry, entry level riders. The May show is a derby show for us that's here also in Williamston. Uh, that show is a fundraiser in general for because on Memorial Day we focus we have a wounded warrior benefit for that show. We do a pro-am tournament and there's buckles presented for that um, and all of that money plus a dollar per every entry goes to wounded warrior. And then this show is our futurity for the three-year-old so that's the focus at this this show is the younger horses and and getting everybody ready for our fall events so there's regional affiliate team finals so we'll have folks that are like like that are showing now and competing that will be on our Virginia Reining Horse team mm -hmm. for the regional affiliates and for us we're in a northeast region so we uh, compete in New Jersey in September at that and the folks that qualify out of that show will go to Oklahoma City at the end of November beginning of December for for the finals. 
is Oklahoma City kind of um, the headquarters for rain? It's kind of the Mecca, yes. right? <laughs> I was going to say the Mecca. Yes. Def, I mean, everything I hear is Oklahoma yes, City. Yes, Oklahoma City, <laughs> Oklahoma City. Everybody wants to go to Oklahoma. So, yeah. yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Yes. And that, so, so Oklahoma City is, is a big draw for us. That's where uh, two of the main NRHA events are held. One is the NRHA Derby, which is in June. The other one is the Futurity. And the Futurity is the big show of the year. Right. And, uh, and it also, ha that also hosts the North American Affiliate Championships. And how can people get in contact with you? So we have a website at um, www.virginiarainyhorse.com. Contact, there's contact information there for all of the board members, for myself, for the, for the rest of our board. Send an email, call, uh, whatever, come, you know, admission is free. We've got information available in our show office on the entry level programs. For us, it's sharing something that's passion for us and, and we think it's fun. And, um, you know, if you sit on a reining horse, you probably won't get off. <laughs> Very good. It is my pleasure to welcome you to St. Andrews University in Laurenburg, North Carolina. My name is Carla Wenberg and I'm an instructor and coach here. I'd like to invite you to 300 acres of a world-class equestrian facility. We have a dedicated group of instructors that come from the horse industry. They are award-winning in their own right. They teach private and group lessons. We house about 100 to 130 head of horses during the school year, and we have about 170 students that take our equestrian classes. We'd like for you to come visit our facility. Hi, my name is Paul Dunn. I'm from uh, Mule City Feeds here in Benson. I'm a member of the Benson Area Chamber of Commerce, and these are my mules. We want to invite you to come to Benson Mule Days in September, be the fourth weekend. And uh, starting on Thursday, we're going to have a concert. It's free. Please come see that. On Friday, we'll have the mule events. It's just like a horse show. You come, you bring your mules, you come sit in the stand, see what happens. The most fun thing that happens all day long is the mule race. We actually have uh, people that are proud enough uh, to, to go after riding mules, and after that we have a pool. Also on Friday we have uh, rodeo and street dance, and uh, there are all kinds of things going on at the Grove downtown. It's just like being at the State Fair. On Saturday, it's really a great uh, event where we have a parade like none other in the state of North Carolina. It's just like any parade for about an hour and a half. Uh, you get to see all the beauty queens and bands, and then after that, there's about 2,000 horse and rider and wagons, and, uh, and that's, that's one of the biggest events in North Carolina. Saturday afternoon, we have a bluegrass show, and uh, Saturday evening, we have more rodeos and street dances, and there's plenty of uh, carnival rides for the kids. On Sunday, we finish up with a rodeo and more carnival rides. Uh, look forward to seeing you. Come on down to Mule Day this September. My guest today is Josie Ann Godier from Francois Godier Reining and Sunny Pines Breeding Farm. We're here in Williamston filming the Reining Show and Josie Ann is a trainer. So Josie Ann, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here this weekend? Well, we're here to uh, actually, it's a futurity this weekend. So our goal is most of our three-year-old, futurity means they're three-year-old and it's the first time in the pen. So we're, um, a when it's a three-year-old, you're going to show them two-handed since they're still babies. And a lot of the time, this show is the first time these horses ever been to a show. So our goal is to have a good experience. We're going to show our three-year-old to um, uh, kind of see a little bit what we got. These horses have been written since they're two years old, starting in January. Mm -hmm. So they have a year and a half of training. So our goal is to uh, kind of see where they're at in their training, what kind of caliber of horses they are now, and um, to see if they're strong enough to go to the future shows. So Very good. That's, that's the main part that we're here. And also we have a lot of non-pros that are coming with us. And we have one guy from, uh, his name is Juan Figueredo from Dominican Republic. And he's gonna represent his country for the world game wow. in 2014 in France. So um, he's here testing his horse and he just marked the 145 and a half. So he's leading so far. So we're just having a great show so far. Very good. And when you're looking for a reigning horse prospect, what do you generally look for? Are they pretty much all quarter horses or is it? There is, you know, Arabian mix or paints, um, for sure quarter horse and, and having a great reigning bloodline, you will feel a big difference with their mentality. They are so easy going, they're very easy trainable um, and, and I think 
I personally like to stay with that breed because it makes my job a little easier, also confirmation-wise. Right. And when you look for confirmation for a random prospect, what are you looking for? I mean, um, big important things, shoulder, headset, how their neck comes out of their shoulders. Um, you know, if, if they don't have a good set of their shoulder and a, and a good point shoulder, um, it's going to be very hard for them to pick him up in the stops, very hard for them to turn over for a spin. Um, for sure, they have to have a nice low hop to be able to stop. Um, so you know, balanced overall. Balance him out, but shoulders and hip is very, very important. Very good. And you say you've been training the three-year-olds for about a year and a half. What age does a, a reigning horse become a pro? And you think he's really... Or well, is it different with everyone? No, I mean, if they started really like they were supposed to in January of their two-year-old year, mm -hmm. normally in the summer of their three-year-old year, so it's a year and a half, and I mean, they've had a month off here and there, so weeks off, um, that's when normally they're, you know, it's they're considered broke, right? And, and probably I'd say by August, September, that's when they can be start to be showing one-handed. I'd say, you know, for a horse to be ready to end off to a non-pro and saying, here you go, this horse will take care of you, if not before they're really four or five. Right, right. So I noticed that you've added week-long camps at your farm now, so tell me about that. Yes, we just had a lot of student and, and customer from overseas and even Canada, and, and now we're offering for people even here in the States that wanted to um, have a good experience, go to the United States, kind of see how it is to live on the ranch, get to know our sport of reining, and we, there's just no place where they would offer that kind of um, clinic. So we just decided, you know, they come over, they have a lesson in the morning, a lesson in the afternoon, and they can do as much as they want to help us, can be part of the team feed, lunch, warm up horses, and, and also they follow our horses training throughout the whole week. So they kind of see with, you know, 10 different horses per trainers what they go through throughout that week. Right. So it's a, just a lot of information. That's a wonderful hands-on experience. I want to go to that myself. <laughs> And so you guys stand stallions also at your farm, don't you? Yes, ma'am. So we, we own Rowdy Yankee. He's a million-dollar sire of different rating, and there's so far only 21 stallion that's hit the million-dollar mark as a producing sire. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're really proud of him. He's by Smart Chikolina. Mm -hmm. and, and for uh, those of you that yes. have been following Carolina Hoofbeats, he was on our very first cover of our magazine. Yes, I was really proud of that. I still have that <laughs> <Me> magazine. <too>. <laughs> <laughs> and we also own Don Quintana that mm -hmm. we bought. Um, at least 10 years ago, my dad showed in the World Game, and, and uh, or actually in the FEI shows, I'm sorry, and uh, he's just been a great addition and produced about three, 400,000 of his babies, so we're excited. Very nice, very nice. So you have a breeding farm in addition to your training business? Yes, yes, and that's kind of what I started taking care of. I, you know, I used to breed about 200 mares a year, ship semen all over the world. Um, now I'm more concentrated on the riding part of it, but it's very important, I think, as a rounded program, you want to uh, be able to offer, you know, I know what I like of a reining horse, so I'm going to try to produce those kind of offsprings to, uh, after that, show and train and sell, and because and, um, I know what I like as a horse, and it's easier for me than trying to go out and, and buy that kind of caliber horses or that kind of confirmation. Right. So we just try, we know our stallions, and we buy some good mares and we match them the way they're supposed to be and try to produce that baby that we want. Very good. And Josie Ann has been writing a lot of articles for our magazine as well on training and trying to help people learn how to do it a little bit at their house. And yes, ma'am. Get some lessons. Yes, so ma'am. Very good. So you're riding tonight? I am. I have a really nice little filly. She's by one of our stallion, Don Quintana. Uh -huh. um, she's owned by Tilden White Earth, is a customer of ours, and she's been a sweet little mare. She's a, um, you know, a, She's a little mare, she's not like this big caliber open mare, but she has so much heart that uh, it'll be her first time in the pen, so you know, I, I'm really excited to see what she's going to give me out there today. Very good. Hi, my next guest is Rebecca McCabe from Catlett, Virginia, and Rebecca is a young rainer, so we thought we'd give talk to her and let her give us some information on how to get into the sport and what drew her to the sport. So what do you like best about raining? I like the spins about raining and everything and how everybody supports you and not tries like doesn't try to beat you or something you are always they're always supportive of each other that's awesome so, yeah. and so how long have you been raining I've been raining for three years and how long have you been riding I've been riding on and off since I was two Wow yeah that's great so you compete in, in what category here I compete in the youth 14 to 18 okay and they have other categories like 13 and under and then short stirrup which is 10 and under okay so. And what kind of horse do you ride? 
I ride a gelding, mm -hmm. so, and he's a really pretty boy. He has like blonde mane and everything. Oh, so, what's yeah. his name? Cooper. That's he's nice. named after Bradley Cooper, the actor. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I see you have some medals around your neck. Did you win those? Yes, we have. I won them today. Tell this me about This one them. was from when I placed ninth on my grandmother's horse, Red. Okay. And this one was when I placed second today on Cooper. Very good. So, yeah. Very good. So are you riding more this weekend? Yes, ma'am. I ride tomorrow, too. Okay. And do you accumulate points during the year when you do the shows is for high yeah. points awards? you have high points awards like at the end of the year they have a banquet mm -hmm. and then they have everybody there and then they give away the buckles and stuff for the end of the year prizes. Okay. Really and how hard do you train for this at home? Do you practice often or what do you do? Yeah, I ride about every day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And do you ride with a trainer or do you? Yeah, I ride with a trainer named Dutch Chapman mm -hmm. who also has two other trainers, Maya Stesson and Martin Odette. And they are from Virginia, I assume? Yeah. Okay. They're up in Maryland though. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All right. And what do you plan to do as you grow up with your horse career? Do you continue to pursue it or? Yeah, I continue to pursue it and show a bunch of horses and stuff, but I want to be a graphic designer. All right. So, yeah. Well, I know a little bit about that with the magazine, so yeah, you have to call yeah. me when you go to school. <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right. Well, congratulations on your wins you. and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Virginia 2012, I had the opportunity to travel the country riding on many different horses and in many different saddles. But nothing compared to coming home and riding in my, uniquely my, world-class saddlery saddle. From its unique dog flower tooling to the custom stirrups made just for me, the saddle fits me and my horses perfectly. So whether I'm out running barrels or in a parade, the saddle is both durable and beautiful. It can get the job done and still look good while doing it. I look forward to riding in my world-class saddlery for many years to come. The North Carolina Horse Council was established in 1972. We are a nonprofit organization that puts every dollar received back into supporting and working for our members. We are a volunteer organization that is supported by people just like you, with passion and energy. Hi, I'm Sue Gray, Executive Director of the North Carolina Horse Council, and I'd like to share with you today a few reasons of why I would like you to join us. We are your voice. We work on rules and regulations that help you use and enjoy your horses each and every day. There's power in numbers. We have over 306,000 horses in North Carolina, making us eighth in the nation. We also have over 53,000 households owning horses with multiple owners within those households. And we are a $2 billion industry adding to the economics of the state of North Carolina. Power in numbers. We ask you that we can go and help to protect those privileges as we move forward. But we do more than that. We also do grants and we help to preserve land and protect our trails. And we support youth groups and other equine associations throughout the state. We welcome you to join us and be part of the largest and most active horse council in America. Hi, my next guest is Francois Gaudier. And Francois kind of started the reining industry in North Carolina and had a big hand in it. Um, how long have you been here? Uh, over 20 years. I moved in uh, at the end of 92. Wow. What brought you to North Carolina? Uh, I sold my farm up in Quebec, uh, that here, and uh, the farm I have, uh, I am right now is uh, belong to Linda Matthews. It used to be belong to Linda Matthews. Right. And she was involved in the raining before. And, uh, and, but at that time, uh, the farm was kind of empty. And I uh, came here uh, just for a month uh, in April to get out of the winter to ride my horse in North Carolina because uh, I knew Linda a little bit and uh, and, I, and I was supposed to get involved to buy some somewhere else in Canada but then after I passed a month here I decided uh, I would be the best place for the breeding and, uh, and the training because of the, the weather and, uh, and, the, and the facility to be close to north south 95 and stuff right. like that. I came out, leased the farm first, and then I bought it, and, and then we start like that. So Sunny Pines Farms in common North Carolina? Yeah, yeah. yeah Very good. And 
and then you went on to, to have a fabulous writing career. Tell me about some of your highs in your career. Uh, well, I've shown since I, I am young up, up in Canada, we started the, about the same time in the raining in the, in the late 60s. And, uh, and then I show uh, there, and uh, my father was a breeder, well, was the first uh, quarters breeder up in Quebec. And then uh, after school, then I took the business, and uh, we were doing uh, lessons and, uh, and training and breeding also. And then uh, I started showing in RHA in, uh, like in 1990, 80, uh, 1980. And, uh, and uh, I got a very nice horse, and, uh, in 1988, uh, the teacher stallion is still alive, and then uh, in, uh, he, he, did, he made the final at the Futurity in 1988, and then uh, after, uh, in 1992, uh, he was breeding a lot of mare, mostly U.S. customer, and then uh, the facility was too small and North Carolina was perfect for breeding because a lot of field, the ground is, uh, in our area is very nice, sandy. Okay, I got moved here for the for mostly for the breeding. I have more space, and then uh, and I, I we keep showing the the, the baby out of uh, our stallion. And uh, the, the, you know, I came here with six horse, and uh, and then a couple of years ago we had 150. <laughs> it, it, it keep growing up, and uh, and I show uh, the local show here, uh, Williamston, uh, Raleigh. Used to be in Raleigh more. And then I show the the major and RHA even, and uh, and then, then, and then uh, I made the final uh, many times at the Futurity. I was second in nine, two or, uh, two or six, uh, no, in two or four, sorry. And then in two, two and two or six, I uh, participated in the World Equestrian Game. Uh, and then the, and, well, the first one was in Spain, and it was the first time that Raining was participating in, uh, in that. And I was with uh, Team Canada, then, and we finished second, and, uh, and, and I did it again in uh, 2006 in Germany. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and then uh, now maybe uh, there's another, the next game is, uh, World Game is in Paris, near Paris ne next year, and maybe uh, I don't know if I'm going to sh show, but maybe Georgian will try to qualify again. That would be nice. Yeah. So you're in the Raining Horse Hall of Fame, aren't you? Uh, so, so some part of it, you know, like uh, up where I'm from, Quebec Raining Association, right. that part. Yeah. That's awesome. And was the first stallion Boogie Flashback? That, that's, the, that's the first stallion that I, 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 the, we promote very right. well, and uh, we bought him as a it was a late three-year-old, and we, we trained him all the way, and, and he was, uh, he got a special look on him, and a special disposition, and he was very popular, and now he's 28 years old, and, uh, and we, we had many of his daughters that we, we kept as a broodmare, and we promote some other stallion now, and, uh, the main one is uh, Roddy Yankee, right. uh, his, his baby produced over a million dollars, and he, we bred a lot of boogies uh, mare with him. Very good. So you have um, for sale horses like babies and yearlings and two-year-olds and prospects. Yeah, and yeah, we we breed. Uh, <coughs> we got uh, we got down maybe I got about 15 baby a year born, but but we breed many mare for for, for different customer and uh, they they bring them back when they two we get them broke and uh, <coughs> promote them and we evaluate them and some have uh, enough talent to, to go to the show ring and uh, and, and some of uh, uh, you can bring to the sale and uh, plama depending the, the disposition of the horse we promote them for customer uh, and it's all related to the breeding right and you have your own line of tech now too don't you yeah a few years ago uh, the, uh, yeah one company approached me that the, a guy from uh, friends I know before he came to work in North Carolina for a company that uh, wanted to develop something uh, to get some uh, bit and some kind of material that uh, that would be a little bit more affordable, uh, but uh, better quality. You know, like it uh, doesn't cost much to make a fifty-dollar bit than a five hundred. Uh, but uh, but you have to be, you have to be a little bit uh, the structure and and then the. the, the format to be a little bit better right. and then I work on that and with my brother then he helped me to design a lot of stuff and uh, and they sold it uh, in Europe and Canada also. Okay and people can buy that at your 
farm and on farm yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, we we keep that. We keep it. We, it's not that a, it's not a big tax shop, but we keep the line and a couple of products for people to come. You know, right? Uh, you know, people come uh, from all over the place. Uh, they, sometimes they buy a horse. They want to have some stuff with it. You know? Okay, and they can they can reach you online to schedule. Yeah, yeah, thing? yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is that website? Uh, the website is uh, fcoachrainingcom Okay. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you talking with us. You're welcome. Thank you for watching today, and I hope that you'll stay tuned every Sunday night for a new episode of Carolina Hoofbeats. And remember, if you listen really carefully, you might just hear the sound of Carolina Hoofbeats near you. This episode of Carolina Hoofbeats TV was made possible in part by funding received from the North Carolina Horse Council, a North Carolina nonprofit corporation dedicated to representing and furthering the common interest of the entire equine industry in all 100 counties of North Carolina. Carolina Hoofbeats is brought to you in part by Newcomb Quarter Horses. Newcomb Quarter Horses with over 40 years experience. Find out how we can help you today. NewcombQuarterHorses.net And by World Class Saddlery. Custom saddles, repairs, custom tack, and personal leather items. Find out more at WorldClassSaddlery.com And also by Carolina Hoofbeats Magazine a free publication about the horse industry in North Carolina. Catch up on the latest issue at carolinahoofbeats.com. nothing else matters. My feet in the stirrups, I'm so happy. There's nothing like the sound of Carolina the sound